Welcome back. In a year busting at the seams with major stories, picking the developments with the most impact in 2018 is a near Herculean task. Was it Mr. Trump's ongoing trade war with China or the long and bitter battle over the border wall and illegal immigration? Was it the highly debatable impact of the Republican tax cut and its failure to generate enough votes to fend off a Democratic takeover of the House? Could it be the riveting and deeply divisive Kavanaugh confirmation hearing amid the transformative Me Too movement? Or will it ultimately be the Mueller investigation and its steady flow of scandalous revelation, criminal indictment and conviction, all triggered by Russian meddling in our nation's 2016 election? I'm going to start with Nyanza. What was your top story? I think my top story was not a partisan story. It was specifically about the families being separated at the border. <clears throat> and that was the one thing I think that for me personally and my family, I was most affected. You know, seeing women and children separated when you have a language barrier in a new country and trying to put myself in the position of a mother that had to travel 3,000 miles to try to seek safety. And then if I got there with my child or my children, then I was separated from them and I didn't know <coughs> when I was gonna get them back. One of the things that we haven't shined enough light on is that we have two cases from a seven-year-old and an eight-year-old that have died in the last month, but we have had 18 deaths of children since 2018 in these border detention centers. And these are baby jails. And one of the things that's, that's disheartening is that the average amount of time that the children are spending in these detention centers is 57 days. In 57 days, there are chances where you can suffer traumatic injuries and you have separation anxiety and those things can lead to later on mental health issues that all become disheartening to all of us. That's the one story that I think that from the Democratic side and the Republican side, we can all come together to fix the issues at the border. David Ballot, your top story. It really has to be the economy. I think prior administrations have said we will never see 3% growth again. That's, that's a thing of the past. Yet we've seen uh, three plus percent increases in the GDP in the last couple of years. The economy has just been, been uh, gangbusters and it's, uh, it's, it's done well for the American people. Uh, consequently, we've seen good things in record lows in unemployment uh, that we haven't seen in, in recent memory. Uh, and it's been impacting uh, people of, of, of different classes, uh, the black community, the Hispanic community, uh, the Caucasians as well. So everybody is, is benefiting from it, and we hope that that continues, and we hope that more people continue to benefit. Tony, your top story. Hey, I'm putting Texas first for my top, start, top story. I really am proud that the Texas State Board of Education united across party lines, 10 Republicans, five Democrats united to support mixed American studies and endorse it statewide. Of course, we always want to make sure all ethnic studies are considered, so we open the door and it's included African American studies, Native American studies, Asian American studies. That's the Texas I believe in. I love it where we unite to make sure that everyone has access to education in the American dream. It's beautiful. Jessica Cologne. Well, the elections of 2018 are uh, my top story, clearly with uh, presidential year turnout this year in Texas and unprecedented campaigning from this president to gain seats in the U.S. Senate uh, and protect seats, the seats he could in the House, which was a, a record, um, you know, uh, he, he lost fewer seats than many presidents in a midterm um, in, in cycles past. What will happen next is the big question. And I think what we're seeing with the border problems at the border, um, uh, how the how criminal illegal immigrants are coming in and um, affecting our communities, um, how we're going to see county government uh, begin to affect folks maybe differently than the, than it has in the past. Uh, now we're coming into 2019 with city elections mm -hmm. uh, where, and where people are proposing and I'm a big, fan of Councilmember Boykins, but I don't agree with his garbage can tax. We don't need to pay any more money to have our garbage collected. We might begin to see ways that <clears throat> people are starting to feel that government is affecting them at their kitchen table and in their pocketbook in ways that they have it before. So paying attention to the results of 2018 elections is going to be a big one in 2019. Tomorrow, Bell, 45 seconds, and then we close with Bob Price. Go. The political intuitive of the Democratic Party that rose up this year and got multiple mm -hmm 
multiple across the state elections in Harris County. For the first time in decades, Harris County has flipped to Democratic Party. The candidate that no one saw coming, Beto O'Rourke, who came in and literally changed lives in Texas, which I am praying for the better by getting judicial candidates that never would have had a chance in the past, county uh, candidates in. In addition to that, in Houston, for the first time ever, to have, which I feel so unfortunate about, public uh, first responders against each other, mm -hmm. firefighters, police. I'm hoping we get resolution to that. But to have everybody's political uh, antenna up now, we need to take advantage of this. Close this out, Bob, about 30 seconds. Not surprisingly, my, sec my uh, topic is on the border and the Congress's lack of action in securing the border. El Paso sector saw an 1,800% increase in families crossing the border in that sector. They're not crossing in El Paso. Why? Because El Paso has a wall. They're crossing in the desert in New Mexico, which is part of the El Paso sector, and they're crossing to the east of El Paso where there's no border security, no fencing. A wall is not the entire solution, but it's a significant piece, and everywhere that it's been placed, illegal immigration stops in that area. You look at San Diego, you look at Nogales, you look at El Paso. Down in the Laredo sector, there is no wall, and we had 600 people come in from countries of known terrorist act, uh, backgrounds. Got to leave it there. Still ahead, our panel answers the question, what do we miss? So stay with us.